This week on Taste Utah, we're taking a trek up Little Cottonwood Canyon to celebrate and rediscover the wonder that is the snowbird experience. They're celebrating 50 years of fabulous memories. Yes, yes, taking the tram to Mineral Basin, shredding the greatest snow on earth, those unrivaled Utah views, but we're talking food experiences as deep and delicious as an epic Utah Powder Day people. From tasting the food at the top of the world to the renovated 71 restaurant experience, Snowbird's got a lot to offer. But today, we're hanging at the Cliff Lodge and exploring the upscale offerings at the Airy and the menu at the beloved Steak Pit after a day on the slopes. Friends, don't we love us a dining destination where we can spend the day carving our lines down the hill, then ditch the boots and for me, change into my heels and head for a meal that nourishes the mind, body, and spirit. Oh, you're in for a real treat. Taste Utah is more than your typical food show. It's about local flavor from roots through authentically Utah restaurants. It's the people and the places that make Utah a dining destination. There's so much soil and earth to uncover and still so many great Utah restaurants to savor. We bring you the stories and we spread the love. The best thing about Utah, the views along the way, they're not bad either. We're not afraid to get our hands just a little dirty. Food is a necessity. It's how we create it and share it and experience it together that truly shapes our community. Whether you're choosing to dine in our dining rooms order to go, or get delivery, you always have a seat at this table. Are you ready to taste Utah? We're up in Little Cottonwood Canyon. We are taking you to celebrate Snowbird's 50th anniversary by tasting all the delicious fare they have to offer. We're gonna go to the Airy, we're gonna go to the steak pit. Sarah's gonna show us the way. Let's do this. It's totally snowing. I've had an incredible day on the slopes and I'm starving. <laughs> up here at Snowy Snowbird, we have lots of different food options for you to explore, but we're gonna take you up to the Cliff Lodge first to the Airy. Okay. Hang out with Chris and Chef Ken. Check okay. out what they're offering up there with some really cool local options. And then we're gonna come back down here. We're gonna hang out with Joel at the steak pit as well as Chef Brian, they're gonna make you, of course, the steak pit, some awesome steaks, and see what they have going on there as well. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. So I'll head to the Cliff Lodge, I'll, I'll ditch the bibs, I'll get a little bit more fancy, and I can't wait to meet uh, Chris and Ken. Awesome, let's do it. All right, thanks, Sarah. Chris! Good evening, welcome. Oh, I am so excited to be here. I literally have been skiing up Little Conwood Canyon my whole entire life. I love the area. We're so excited to have you. I know Chef's prepared some great dishes for you. He is actually just waiting for you inside. I mean, that's music to my ears. Enjoy. Thank you. Chef, you're executive chef of the area. Um, and how long have you been executive chef? The this Airy? is starting my 10th year. Your 10th year. My 10th year. The area's always been known to have sort of this reputation of fine dining, quality food, but mm. you've even sort of kicked that up a notch yeah. and you use a lot of local ingredients. Yeah. So like where we can, um, and what we can do is, you know, think, think small. Yeah. Think local and then through other purveyors, you know, what can I get here locally? And then I kind of, you know, expand the circle as much as I can. The food culture up here may be one of the most underrated in the state, where people think about big wines and sort of these decadent menus. You have to go up to Park City or up to Deer Valley, but you can find that caliber and quality of food, yeah. that elevated cuisine up Little Conrad yeah. Canyon. Yeah, no, and, and a lot of people think, you know, I'm gonna drive, okay, I'll drive downtown, I won't drive 15, 20 minutes downtown, yeah. or you can drive 15, 20 minutes up a hill. Yeah. And you've got a great view, you've got a great menu, you know, and then great wine list, yeah. world renowned wine list, great cocktails, a great environment. And it's one of those deals where fine dining is fine dining, you know, comfort food is comfort food, but where can you draw that line and kind of mix the two together? Like what I want to do is imagine you coming into my house you coming over for dinner 
and this is what we're going to prepare, and this is this, and then you leave satisfied. You leave, this is you know, this is a great meal, and I can't believe it's up Little Cottonwood Canyon. We have to dive into the food. We have our house made gnocchi okay. with borsin cream and roasted mushrooms. Okay. Um, a little twist on deviled eggs where we lightly fry them and uh, with lamb bacon. And oh, then, I love that. And then our uh, scallop dish where it's uh, chili encrusted uh, diver sea scallops, street corn, and uh, house made queso fresco. What are some of your favorite things on the menu? These oh. three items I love a lot, yeah. honestly. I really do These love These are like lot. the showstoppers These are the you. showstoppers, you know, because the gnocchi takes me back to when one of my first jobs I had working at a mom and pop Italian restaurant back in Greenville, South Carolina. And actually when I worked in Europe, we always made gnocchis. Deviled eggs, because my grandmother used to always make deviled eggs, and we make deviled eggs on every holiday, and then it's so special. that's that. And yeah. then scallops have always been a huge fan of myself and my wife and my son. The other thing that I really love, and it's probably the most labor-intensive thing, and everybody in the kitchen probably will hate me for saying this, is <laughs> I really love our chicken roulade, where we bone out a um, half a chicken. We make a uh, chicken force meat, put that inside the uh, chicken, roll that up, poach that and we pan fry that and it's just like it's to me that's just it's a very it's a really great play on a very classic french dish that it it, it draws out wine yeah you know, it really draws out wine we have to talk about the wine menu because mm. like you said it's award-winning yep. wine menu and then the beverages i have um you have the airy original okay you know so it's uh high west blue rye bnb and uh a little vermouth a little play on a manhattan yeah you know our wine list is is probably one of the most extensive in the state. Yeah. It has, you know, wines from everywhere that you can ever imagine, but then also we're very, you know, very heavily California driven and actually very heavy um, old world driven too, mm -hmm. you know. That's one so of Fred's. This is a Fred's, beautiful French wine. Yep, that's one of Fred's passions is wine. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for him, anytime that he sees something really interesting or neat or different or has a great story, because everything has a story. Yes. And, you know, we grab it up and, Put it on the list. That's so cool. Why is, is the restaurant called the Airy? Way back when, when the Airy was first, you know, well, actually, when this building was first made. Okay. Uh, Terry Monahan, one of the um, servers that actually is here currently right now, she's been here for uh, years. I don't want to say. Oh how many my gosh, that's she's been here wow. Since day one, she named the Airy. Okay. Okay. And so the Airy is a eagle is a nest, a nest up in the mountains, or mm -hmm. an eagle's nest, mm -hmm. and so that's why. That's how we got our name. This is Where's a nest name? up in the mountains for weary skiers, mountain bikers, travelers to come and just really be nourished and nurtured, not just by the food, but by the nature around us, yep. which I think is so unique and so special. I would love to pop back in the kitchen and see you make a dish. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, we'll okay. do that. Let's do it. All right, Chef Ken, this is super fun. You're gonna actually make the scallop dish that yep. was just on the table. With your help. Yes, I'll, your help. anytime, okay. put me to work, right. I love it. So, for what we've got here, scallops, we crust, we crust them in a chili uh, chili crust. Okay. We'll, what we'll do is we'll take uh, chili powder, okay. a little bit of cayenne, and smoked paprika. Okay. Roughly on, uh, one part, one part, and a half a part. Mix it all together. Nice. That. Okay. And then we've got our roasted corn. Beautiful. Some diced up red onions, some jalapenos, and then our uh, our street corn dressing. Okay. Yeah. What that is is it's mayonnaise, sour cream, uh, some cilantro, yeah. some, some more smoked paprika, and cayenne pepper. It kind of makes me wish the okay. scallop dish was in front of me at the table. Yeah. Although the so, gnocchi was really good. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Awesome. So, First of all, let's get our pans hot. Make sure Because when you're going. cooking scallops, especially beautiful scallops like this, you want a smoking hot surface. Yeah? I want, yes, we want a hot pan. And then that sizzle is like music to That's the key. your ears, yep. right? I love it. Because remember, when you saute, saute means to jump in French. To jump. So you want to always see all the little things going on right Jump, there. Jumping, oh, I love that, I didn't know that. And it really is like the bubbling is, is shaking because the entire scallop. if you don't scallop. see that, if your pan's not hot enough, what you're gonna eventually do is almost boil it. We're gonna sweat our onions. Okay. And sweating the onions just means that you're We're, cooking them down in a hot liquid, right? Yep, hot oil, making it until it gets a little bit translucent. Love it. Getting the moisture taken out of it. 
And you can actually start smelling those those red onions a little bit. Yeah. You can kind of smell those jalapenos. I mean, this is kind of like Southwestern flavors. It's sort of a, it is. yeah. It is. All right, so I'm just gonna add in our roasted, roasted corn. Roasted corn. So you've roasted the corn and now you're just heating it up. Exactly, yeah. Okay. And there's other ways you can do, like if you want to make street corn at home, you can, you can put it on the grill. You can grill it. Yeah. You can, um, you can deep fat fry it. You can yeah. throw it in the oven. Or you can just even take off the cob and saute it. Well, you're hard. infusing all this flavor, which I really love. So you're roasting it first. That brings its own sort of nuance of flavor. And then you're marrying it with the jalapeno, the red onion, which then elevates that flavor even more. Yeah. You've got a beautiful sear. Nice just sear there. love that crust. And so I'm going to let that go for just another few little seconds. And then I'll Perfect. hit it with some butter. And I, what I also really love is you're using all of these classic French techniques but then you're also infusing this beautiful Southwest flavor. Yep. And then, did somebody say butter? Butter makes everything better. Yep. So I'm just gonna reduce my heat a little bit. Okay. Let that melt. Give this a little bit more color. Ooh. All right, so basting those up. Basting that in beautiful butter. That's also just a classic French technique where you have that butter and you spoon it over the top. So our scallops are ready, our corn's ready. All right, we're ready to plate. Growing up, my brother, my brother is an art, a local, a local artist here. Growing up, we used to always go to a bunch of art museums and things all around the country. Okay. And so, I think the the big thing is I always kind of reference is is uh, how can you like I really like Jackson Pollock as yeah. an artist because like it's organized chaos, but then also how can you reference that? in a nice way so yes. it's always I think it's always good to make sure where your eye can always kind of move but it's always on a focal point wherever yes. you can. Yes. Beautifully balanced but not necess it doesn't necessarily have to be symmetrical. Exactly. We have a little bit of a cilantro vinaigrette that we'll put on this. Just like that pops with the scallops yeah. it's gorgeous. Some chili oil. A little chopped cilantro wherever it falls. Organized chaos, I love it. And then we make this, this is just our uh, house-made queso fresco. And that's just one of those things where it's making, you know, this is just a really kind of simple thing that you just take milk, some lemon juice. Yeah. Heat it up to 170, let it sit for about a half an hour, and you strain it through and you've got, you've got fresh, fresh cheese. Chef, this has just been such a beautiful time with you. It's educational to understand all of the integrity and intention that is going into the menu at the Harry and all of the preparation that happens here. Um, but you can really come up and have such a sophisticated dining experience. I am going to take a bite of that because I'm salivating. And then I'm going to head to the steak pit. And uh, I hear that there's um, there's some pretty sophisticated dining going on there as well. Yep, some great steaks. OK. You can't be. You you can't a little beat after turn. having a uh, hard day of skiing, having a big, a big steak, you can't beat that. I mean, that's pretty hard to beat as well. No, that's the most important thing. Oh, it's well. so good, chef. Good. Not bad. Knocked well it passed. out. Well done. Thank, Thank you. you. Taste Utah cares about the health and wellness of our hospitality family. And as a reminder, health insurance is available for you and your family, including medical, dental, vision, life, disability, and Medicare coverage. Learn more by visiting www.hospitality-health.com backslash URA. Hey, welcome to the Steak Pit. Chef Brian prepared some amazing steaks and food for you to try right this way. Thank you. Thank you. Chef Brian, this is a ridiculously delicious smorgasbord in front of us. Right. 
I mean, the stake pit has basically been around for the entire duration of Snowbird, is that right? That's right. Uh, well, we opened in 71, yeah. so I think we opened shortly after that. So talk to us a little bit about what we have in front of us. I'm gonna dive into the bread if that's cool. Sure, yeah, go for it. Um, so I've got a ribeye in front of me. This okay. is our most flavorful steak. It's got the most marbling in okay. it. Um, in front of you, we've got our filet mignon. How many ounces is that really? Uh, this is 16 ounces, and that's eight ounces. And then what about the accoutrement in front of us? Um, so this is our nine grain bread right okay. here, served with our compound butter. It's got uh, garlic and onions in it. Our bacon wrapped scallop is wrapped in hardwood bacon, served with a Dijon aioli. Ooh, yum. Yeah. At the steak pit, you would say your menu's probably fairly simple, yeah. but just really high quality ingredients. It's really high quality. We don't over season things. Mm -hmm. So that's, the, that's kind of the key. Cook correctly, not over season. And what's the secret to the meat? So we wet age all our meat. Basically we get the full muscles and then um, we age it at least 40 days and then we hand cut it here ourselves. Basically it allows the um, steak to become more tender. Yeah, my, my knife just literally melted yep. right through that. Yeah, that you could probably cut with a butter knife. Yeah, it melts oh, in your mouth. Sure. You're getting in full muscle and then you're yeah. breaking it down. I mean, talk to us a little bit yeah, about Yeah, so that. basically I get here every day. I've worked here the last 21 years. I get 21, 21 years? years yeah. mm -hmm. Chef, that is yep. amazing. Uh, but yeah, basically I come here, I hand cut them all myself for the most part. I remember coming to the steak pit as a little kid um, and just feeling so fancy. It's high quality food, but it's casual. Yes. Like so you can come in yeah. heels, you can come in yeah. ski boots. I've seen ski boots. And, bibs, yeah, yeah, yeah the whole thing. Judge you. Well, I would love to go back in the kitchen and just prepare one of these bad boys. Sounds good. Can we do it? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, awesome. Chef Ryan, I kind of feel like this is your lair. Like yeah. this is where you do all of the stuff. Yep, every day. It's so cool. So basically we were talking at the table and you're saying how you get in the whole muscle and that's what this is. Yeah and yep. then you keep it in this packaging, age it for 40 days. Yeah, so basically it just ages in its own juices okay. for 40 days. That allows it to become really tender. Out of this, we get our ribeye, which we just had, and our filet mignon. Yeah. And talk to us a little bit about, so we're seeing this white sort of um, marbling is what you call it, yeah? Yeah, we, yeah, we call this marbling, okay. uh, this or intramuscular fat basically. Yeah. And that's where all the flavor comes okay, from. Okay, so you want, when you are looking maybe even for your own steak, you want to make sure that it's got some really some, lovely... Yeah, some marbling. So this is uh, prime, it starts at select, choice, and it gets up to prime. Okay, so prime is like the creme de la creme. Yeah, yeah. Pr prime is really good. Very um, cool. And aging it too, if you've ever seen the really bright red steak at the grocery store, it's probably yes. not aged correctly. Okay, so. so aging it allows it to have almost what looks like a discoloration, but that's actually an yeah, indication. Yeah, it means it's aged correctly. Yes, okay, very yeah. cool. So um, from here, you, do you just throw it on the grill? Yeah, I just uh, put some cooking spray, okay. throw it on the grill. Yeah, let's ahead. see it. Sure. Yeah. You're just putting down a little bit of non-stick? Yeah, just, non just, just a little uh, spray so it doesn't stick. Okay. I'm just gonna season it with a little okay. bit of salt. Little, and that's some nice coarse, kosher salt? Yeah, this is a little kosher salt. Uh, for the ribeye, I've got a little smoked sea salt. Oh, nice! So there, there's a lot of amazing salts out there. Yeah. So, uh, this is smoked sea, smoked sea salt. How long does it take to, I mean, these are pretty thick steaks. Yeah, so these typically take around 12 minutes or so. 12 minutes to cook yeah. all the way through. It depends on the thickness and the heat. I like yeah. to cook on a nice, hot grill. Yeah, um, gives you those beautiful grill marks. Yeah, we, yeah. we charbroil everything you here, which kind of, I think it enhances the flavor a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's nothing like cooking over an open flame. Yeah. Not only does that create, I think, a higher cook point, but then it just enhances the flavor yeah. of whatever it is you're cooking. Right. When you're like mid-season, full bore, yep. how many pounds of steak do you feel like you're going through? Or like how many steaks do like, you feel like you're cooking a, a day? About hundreds of pounds. Like, hundreds of yeah, pounds. Yeah. So a busy night will do like 200 people in yeah. uh, two or three hours. And so I'm sure that so these grills are full. just completely full. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm gonna flip these real quick. They're gonna quick. flip them. Oh yeah, those are beautiful grill marks. One turn. 
you can see now it's yeah, starting so I'm to... Yeah, going about three minutes a turn. So okay. we're going to turn it a couple more times to get those marks on there. And I've got hotter spots and cooler spots on my grill, so yeah. I, I kind of will put, you know, if it's a thicker steak, I'll put it in a little higher heat. It. If it's thinner, I'll put it on a, uh, a lower heat spot. So and I know my grill and where all the hot spots yeah. and cooler spots are. And I'm, like, interested to see where they are. And as far as temperatures go, yeah. um, it, there's... Uh, there's timing. After I've, you cook a couple million steaks, I yeah. can basically time it. Um, there's feel. I can feel how the, uh, basically if I squeeze this way, can I, can, I can kind of tell where it's at. If it's more rare, is it just more squishy? Yeah, it's a little more squishy. Okay. And then also by look, after I've cooked so many, so, I, can, yeah. I can tell just by looking. I'm at sure, it. I mean, if you're cooking, hundreds of pounds hundreds, of steak yeah. a night, yeah. you just know. There is no timer back here. You're just timing it in your mind. Yeah. That's, I mean, yeah. that's really the mark of like yeah. a master chef. Yeah. And our servers too, they, they have their timing down. So hopefully they're up here waiting for their steak. I mean, cause you want it hot off the grill. Oh, yep, for yeah. sure. Here, nice hot one here. And these are smoking hot as well. This grill is on. Yeah, these, these guys are hot. So I'm gonna set that there. Nice. All right, I'm going to place my ribeye down. Nice. Then and then putting the round guys. one down, getting it ready for the filet. For the filet, yep. Nice. Just looking at it. Feels like it's about there. Yeah, that's amazing. It does the feel with, the t with just the tongs. Yep. Well, yep. Chef, this has just been honestly so fun and such an educational experience and you really are a master of thank you. all things steak pits sure. so just thank you so much i mean the day at snowbird has been really really exceptional and sure. all of the food all of the things that are being done here to give us such a great experience after we ski i mean i'm all about the after you ski sure. and you've convinced me to go full bore into the steak pit yeah you have to come into the steak pit thank you yeah. so much yeah, thank you